Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, we're going to be testing out a couple more popular historic decks. Um, tail end of the ladder, we are in Mythic, so seeing if we can get into the numbers. Uh, not as impactful this month, but something I want to see if we can get there. Um, I'm trying something out with the uh, recording this time, just to see if I can get a little bit higher quality in conjuncture to streaming. Uh, so do let me know if there's any kind of hiccups or anything like that. Um, so the deck that we're going to be playing today is a Mono Red Luris deck. Uh, so this is something that's been quite popular on the ladder, as well as in other formats as well. Um, basically the conjuncture of Luris with a bunch of cheap uh, aggressive threats in a Mono Red Shell, like a Burn Shell. So everything in our deck has red mana, we just are having like Shocks and Buddy Lands to cast Luris off of. And then what we have is just a bunch of aggressive threats. You have Firebrand, Fervent Champion, Lava Runner, Robber, Viashino, and Burning Tree. So you can like sack Firebrand, get it back, sack it again. You have the haste options with a lot of these creatures as well. And then you have a pretty heavy burn package of Shock, Lightning Strike, and Wizard's Lightning. Uh, Lava Runner and Viashino are both Wizards. And then you have Light Up the Stage for card advantage. In terms of the sideboard itself, we have Alpine Moon versus the field matchups, uh, Red Cat Melee versus like Winota or Mirror matches, Lantern for graveyards, Embrith for uh, Cage or uh, anything with like a artifact that we need to blow up. Oven is another good target. Uh, I'm playing some Lava Coils just as additional removal versus like Gruel and stuff. Uh, Flame of Keld is good against the more grindy matchups to refill our hand, and then two Unchained Berserkers versus. Uh, like Yorion or any of the white-based kind of Teferi-style decks. So we'll take it to the ladder. Uh, I haven't been playing too much recently. Once hitting Mythic, we're at 93%. But we'll see how it goes and take it from there. Um, I'm working on an Abzan graveyard deck that I'll feature tomorrow. Um, but if you do have any suggestions for decks you'd like to see, do leave me a note on YouTube uh, in the comments and we can go from there. Uh, and as always, if you are catching this on YouTube or catching this live on Twitch, you do enjoy the content want to show your support if you can draw a follow either on youtube or on twitch uh they're both free and easy ways to help out the channel goes a long way appreciate the support so jumping into this see what we find in terms of the opponent uh the deck's very quick which is nice so if you're just looking to ladder up quick win or lose most of the games only last like 10 15 minutes so you're not going to have to grind out uh matchups uh most of the rare wild cards are already standard legal so you have an overlap there it's really just the older historic cards which are common and uncommons play first this hand's too many lands <clears throat> i'm gonna keep this hand put back a lava runner i think so i have a couple options here. I have Lava Runner that can attack in, and then we can light up the stage. Come on. I believe in you, Arena. If they played out a creature that we were concerned with, we also had Wizard's Lightning. Perfect. So if they play a creature, hey, Azim. Yeah, this is a pretty sweet one. Um, some options with the deck as well. Um... I think we discard probably the strike. Uh, no, maybe we do a, a robber. We have another robber in hand. I'm just going to go face here. So deciding what we're going to play out next, we'll attack in. Okay, so we hit Murderous Rider. That's actually pretty solid for us. It gives us a removal spell if needed. Just have this come into play tapped. So how it works is you can cast one side or the other. So Fenlurker, I'll just get rid of this mountain here. I'm probably just going to cast the 2-3. This looks like Mono Black Devotion. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to put a, a stop. 
before blocking. I want to see how they block. Also what I flip. Yeah, so since we hit Knight of Eben, I'm going to Firebrand and kill the Fenlurker here. So if they want to block, they have to... The nice thing is with our mana base, we can also activate Knight. <clears throat> Depending how they block, if they pump, we have Lightning Strike. So this deck's really just turning your creatures sideways. Okay, and I go Heartless Act here. So I think with the Heartless Act, we just play out Luris, cast Firebrand, and then hold it up if they have a, a creature. We have the pump out of Knight of Even Legion. So even if we draw a land, we could pump this. We have a Lightning Strike here, and they should be dead on board. So, nice and quick, mono black devotion it looks like. Um, this matchup's going to be a little tricky if they are playing, um, what's his name, Phyrexian Obliterator. So we need to be mindful of that. Um, so I'm going to bring in what, the Flame of Kel just as refill and some Lava Coils. Uh, Firebrand's probably not that, uh, Firebrand could do some chip damage. Shock. I think I want to keep the burn in just because of uh, Obliterator. So. Probably just the Firebrands on the play. And then go from there. Everything else can get to two power, whether Fervent Champions attacking with multiple. Um, and yeah, kind of be good if we had some lands. Keep this hand. I think we put a lightning strike back here. So next turn's probably fervent. we attack here this might just be heartless act okay since that's the case i think i'm just gonna do this and then lightning strike here lava runner doesn't quite have haste yet Solid. Let's light up the stage here. Um, I think we light up again. Sweet. So next turn, I can like dump a whole bunch of stuff. They have obliterator. Okay, and they have it. So we are gonna probably set up for a burn turn here. Um, I have to sacrifice five things. Don't really want to do that. We can set them up where we just get them low enough and then alpha strike them. Yikes. And they exile with Pajuka Bog. Wow. Yeah, we don't really have an answer for this. The clock's gonna be 
too quick there. Um, let's go Firebrand on the play. Let's get rid of the Lava Coils. Um, let me just trim two. Run it back. Yeah, Obliterator into Ritual into Bog is... Because we would have been okay, I think, had they not bogged. Because then I just play out some creatures. I can attack in and try to race them. And this hand's fine. I want to go quick, so I'm going to attack with Fervent first. Because then that lets me get to... And then uh, light, uh, Wizard's Lightning. get in a point of chip damage if we draw another fervent then it's good as well let me attack first just in case they have something like disfigure i think this turn so i'm gonna do this hit him up top because if I just draw more lands, then I could flame a Keld. Yeah. Not the most explosive start in our end. We've drawn five lands already. But opponent did stumble on lands. We'll have three cards in hand next turn. Hopefully set up for... A kill with the ultimate on this. I'm wondering if we play Heartless Act in the sideboard. If Obliterator decks tend to be... That's rough. So second Flame of Keld's not bad. Yeah, it helps a bit. The problem is we don't have that much pressure. Like, we can try to juke them out here. The, the good thing is their life total is low enough here that... Okay, they bog. It's not the end of the world. But even with, like, Obliterator, it doesn't help them here. Like dread shade. Yeah, they're dead. Gotcha. That's why. Like, if your opponent stumbles at all with the deck, then it's really easy to get ahead of them. It's not. Everything in the deck's cheap. Like, you're really only playing one mana spells. I don't know if we can play Heartless Act with only eight black sources maybe worth trying but we'll see how the games go if we run into more of it for the most part i think we just do that burn them out as quick as possible or spam the board and then do an alpha strike and then sack it after after playing a good month of yorian mirrors just playing mono red is a welcome welcome change of pace we did a deck tech and a game. In like 14 minutes. Uh, Azem or AK Mage, uh, is everything okay in just in terms of like frame rates in the video? I'm just trying to do both streaming and recording it so it comes out as a higher quality for the YouTube. Just wondering if it has any issue on the actual performance of the stream. Opponent goes first, they're on Amori. I think we keep this. Hope to draw into land. Okay, they're on back. Thanks. Uh, for Monday, I'm hoping Teferi and Agent get banned. 
potentially fires. My guess is they take light up the stage here. Yikes. Is this mono black devotion again? What's with all these people playing mono black? What do you think, AK? Agent's just ruining standard. Like, I know it's not the enabler, but it's the best thing you can be doing in a lot of strategies. Um, the thing is, Wreck, you can still fight them on the axis of counter spells. The problem is with Teferi, it invalidates a lot of the counter spells in the format. Give me a land. Sweet. Um, I think we pass the turn here. I'm going to lightning strike this on end step, so that way if I draw a land, then I can kill this as well. Yeah, that's another thing, like just having it go into your hand. The card. I like, uh... Yeah, because the problem, like, you're main boarding Mystical Dispute, but if you don't clip the Teferi when you cast it, when they cast it, then your counter spells are done. But stuff like, if you can play Disdainful Stroke against, um, like, Yorian builds, uh, it helps a lot, even against fires. Like, Karuga fires or, like, Cavalier fires sucks against counter spells. You might want to look at even something like Growth Spiral, getting that out of the way. Um, so here, this is actually interesting. I think what we do is Hasty Monkey, kill Fenlurker, tack in, cast Light up the stage. Sweet. So I'm going to shock this on end step. We're probably still pretty far behind missing the land drop we are kind of banking on this dealing a point of damage early okay so they have a yara the problem with doing freebooter is like we get the spells back which ends up hurting the opponent so do this Burning Tree is basically a free spell in this deck. You just get a free 2-2. Two -two. Let's try to find another land. We are uh, not finding lands this game. I'm giving the opponent a lot of outs. Okay, let's go Burning Tree. Into Robber, into Lava Runner. So hoping that, well, actually they're a creature-based deck, so they're not going to have Ritual at least. Hit him for six here. Sweet. Okay, so this version, I think we do the same board plan as last one. Uh, lava coils and thing um, again I think we just take out firebrands on the play they're not really gonna get through much and then outside of um, what's its name uh, Yark Fenlurker I don't think we're gonna hit much to be honest you probably take out Fen now they probably take out the um, kite sail freebooters against us they're not that good because I'm imagining they have like ravenous chupacabras, which we can shock. It's really just obliterator that we need to worry about. And it's actually funny that when we play mono red, the first two decks we run into are obliterator potential decks. So I think based on this hand, I probably go lava runner first. And then go Burning Tree into Fervent Champion. 
And then I'll go flame a Kelt. They'll probably have the advantage this game, just being, wow. All of the lands. So we'll drop one more land, doesn't really matter, and then we'll play Flame of Keld unless we draw something. Okay, so they do have Blast Zone, so it's something to be mindful of. They can pop this and kill two of our one drops. Don't really care about that. So we'll attack in here. They can take a block. They can also double block, which is actually the best for us because I'm just going to take this knight off the board. Yeah, and like I've asked for Tef and I have a foil, like I have a playset and some foils of it. So I'm financially invested in the card. Um, I just think it limits a lot of things you can do like you can't play phoenix you can't play um like random stuff that comes out just because of the claws okay fenlurker's not doing too much here us drawing all our burning trees ain't the best um so since we're not doing anything with haste. We can do this. If I was the opponent, I'd probably wait till next turn because this popping off is going to deal a bunch of damage. I actually think I might want another Flame of Keld in the sideboard. These two games that we've had it has been very good for us. Yeah, just being able to like get an extra body into play. Like sometimes it's a little awkward because you can't use the green mana. But like here they need to decide. They can pop the blast zone. It takes them down a land. They can kill these two things. But this pops off. This deals damage plus two. So these are dealing four damage each plus the CTB is dealing four. Okay, they just go Mari here. So they're probably dead. Pop, pop. So I'm doing this main phase because if I hit land in something else, okay, we don't. All our creatures are expendable. And they're dead on upkeep here. Sweet. 2-0 with the deck. Up to 95. Let me give Arena a quick reset. Was glitching earlier today when I was testing some stuff out. It's nice this month. Like last month, I was really focused on making top 1200. This month, it's just for Mythic points, which generally you can't do too much with unless you're like MPL. So I think the one thing I want to do, I really like Flame Keld in the side. Like the likelihood of us drawing this against Field is pretty minimal. I think we just go Flame Keld. Like the matchups we're going to try to win against Field, we're going to try to win them before they can do anything. I don't like a one of to try to hit. Seems a little bit too circumstantial. It's not like we can tutor for it or anything, so it's not going to be the easiest. At least Flame Akel that comes down, refills our hand. Still good in that matchup where we can dump our resources and then the kind of Anthem effect is good. Cool, we need a wizard, but overall pretty solid. Jengatha. 
It's probably a field deck, maybe. Our hand's not very good against field. We usually want more threats. I would love a Viashino Pyromancer on two. Or like a robber would be good, just something to get, accrue some value. But I want these to cost one, not three. So opponent right now is at eight, nine. So they're basically at a virtual 11. One thing, they probably have Clarion or a Sweeper, so it's something to be mindful of. They are ramp, they can have Uro for life gain. The downside of this build is you can't play Tybalt or um, Rampaging Feros- not Ferocidon. Oh, Humans. Oh, I severely miss it or misassess this matchup. Sideways Monkey. So I think I want to use this as removal. Keep the shock as well. It's just five of color. Yeah, because I guess modern humans does play this as a free roll. So they might have dire tactics in the deck, so that's something to be aware of. Perfect. Shock here. I think we just control their board here. In this matchup, Firebrand should actually be pretty solid recurring with uh, Lurus. I think we go Luris here. And then next turn, because like it guarantees me I can play Firebrand. Our hands all burn, so I just want to kill whatever they have and then attack it. This on its own is not enough pressure. Okay, so Mardu. So they likely have Um What's its name? Uh Judith. They can have um, General Kudro. They can have Tajik. We played a version similar to this. We didn't go Burning Tree. Um, it's a little inconsistent at times hitting some of the stuff. Yep, they have Judith. So I'm using this. This is more mana efficient. They take out Fervent, it's fine. Um, let's just go Fervent here. They're two points off. So I'd probably just go face here. I have eight damage and burn. Fine. Just burn to the face here. Show them we had it on upkeep. And that's why having a lot of burn in this deck does help. It can be versatile as both removal early and then afterwards uh, attack them. So we have Unchained. I don't think we play red cap. It's a little bit uh, circumstantial here. Um, I'm gonna cut the light up the stage, I think. It's gonna be hard for us to get in through some chip damage. Wizards Lightning's fine, Shock's fine, Gitu's fine. I 
think I want flame killed some numbers. Um, so maybe I kind of want the burn. So maybe cut a wizard's lightning, cut a robber, and play two flames. It can let us push through damage. They'll probably take out Thalia. Mind you, it is good as a first striker, but we've shown Firebrand, so Firebrand can easily um, pop off and kill it like that last game. They should have the advantage this game just being on the play. Our little 1-1s one aren't going to be as effective. Yeah, I think we keep this hand. So I'm probably going to lead off with Lava Runner. Second thought, let's go Fervent here. Probably not going to attack with Lava Runner anyways. Because next turn I can go Lava Runner and if I need to, Wizard's Lightning, if not Shock. And then that sets me up for turn 3, drop Flame Akeld. Nyx Fleece Ram. Okay, opponent. I see what you're doing. Um, here, I think we just attack with both. I'm just trying to get chip damage in here. So if they go Kudro next turn... Hmm, that's actually interesting. So they can take one of these. It's actually okay, because what I can do here is play this, play this, get the shock, shock here. Oh, they're a multicolor human. This makes this bigger. And I get their deputy to attack in with next turn. So I can exile something of theirs. The mana base is very painful. Like, the Nyx Fleece is keeping them in here. If it wasn't for the incidental life gain, they'd be a lot lower. Okay, so I think here what we do so I tack in with everything oh no I didn't play a land doesn't matter we would have been okay on so deputy here Tapped. We can go Jengatha this turn if they want, but then I'm just going to Luris and get back the Robber. And then attack with Robber. Like a wizard. Okay, it's also good. So I think based on that, I go Viashino here. And start setting up Flame a Kilt. If I can draw two burn spells, get Jengatha off the battlefield. Kudro is a good one. Kudro being incidental hate against our graveyard.
is a good axis for them to attack on. Seems a bit aggressive. Yikes. For red source, you control... You drew a lot of lands this game. So, that'll deal four to Kudro. This makes this bigger. in with everything and then I could replay Flamekeld. Flamekeld also very good with Luris. So we get a few draws next turn. Jengatha will hit us down. Okay, we have Lightning Strike as well. Okay, that's actually a very good set of draws. I think here we just turn everything sideways with the Lightning Strikes in hand. I just want to maximize damage. Sweet, Flamekeld. Wonder if we main board Flamekeld. It's so good with Luris. Just every tur every three turns. Just kinda spew it out. Okay. I like this. This deck is fun. It's quick. It does exactly what I want. Yeah, Flamekeld was sweet. Any of those grindy matchups? I think maybe coming in a sideboard for those, um, like the longer matchups would be good. Like that match there where we're trading resources, we're throwing away our creatures. We probably got about like four to six extra draws off Flame of Keld in that match. Sweet. All right. So I think, um, I'm going to run one quick one just to test this. Um, and then I'll do a dedicated video. Like I haven't finished the sideboard or anything. This is a... Work in progress for the next video is a Abzan self-mill reanimator. Um, basically playing around in burial rights, self-mill a bunch of stuff, try to get Ulamog out or stuff like that. And you have Eerie Ultimatum to just get everything back. Um, just going to play an unranked game with it just to see. Um, usually when I do brews, I, like this was a, an already an existing deck, so we just played it. When I play Baru's, I try, if possible, to run, like, a handful of games offline, like, just in Unranked, just to see how it fares. Like, sometimes you have this idea, and it just doesn't work out the way you want, so I'm going to try it out, and then refine some of the numbers. I might go, like, more in terms of creatures, and then have, like, a sideboard plan of moving into, like, more of a mid-range list. This hand is awful hand is equally awful but we'll try it out you usually want like a stitcher supplier on one something like that so they're Mari on Mardu this Winota So 
because they're creatures, I think just getting a blocker here is good. They make this Mythos cost one more. They're on five color humans. So I think here we trade with Tajik. Yikes. This isn't where we want Big Daddy. The awkward thing is I don't have the mana for Cavalier either. So I'm going to Mythos here. I'll probably take the hit. If they just go Amari. Take that off the battlefield. Just like Robber. matter here. So I'm doing this so I get less cards for the robber. Let's see what they name with meddling mage. Settle the wreckage. You sir are or madam are not aware of what deck we're playing. So Eldest Reborn is something I could blink with Yorian and then it also lets me get creatures back from my graveyard so I can get this Knight of Autumn back and also force their hand and kind of control the board. Ideally I'd like to play this Cavalier of Thorns out first. Each opponent discards a card. Um, let's go Yorian here. Takes another creature off the battlefield. I don't feel great about reanimating this Knight of Autumn anyways. So similar to Elspeth Conquer's death, you get a lot of recurring value, and it gives me a variety of ways to reanimate. That's not good. Not good at all. And they have the robber. Well, I didn't want Isolated Chapel. So looking for a green source here. So throw a block in front here. Opponent will look at a very interesting hand from us. Ooh, they hit our Eerie Ultimatum. I think we... Yeah, we're dead anyways. I gain four life. I cast Cavalier of Thorns. Awkward draw. Not getting any of our enablers early. Actually pretty smart for them to exile the Yorian again. See, to me they had lethal. So I can bring this. So I can bounce the Yorian here back to our hand, which seems pretty sweet. And then I go Cavalier, get Castle. So I got some blocks in place here. Oh, they got Giant Killer. Yeah, now I'm dead. Okay, let me let me run one more. That was a hell of a top deck from them. We actually might have been able to stabilize because I could have Kenrith and then gain life. So you want Mire trade in or Glow Spore Shaman or um, I think there's a few ways to self mill. I might look to put Ashiok in the deck because it has incidental um, use with. I'm going to keep this hand. We're a little light on lands, but Glow Spore can put a land back on top. This looks 
looks like some variation of knights. Could be red, white, mardu, or just aggro. It's part of the problem too, just playing this in best of one. I think this deck could be better in best of three. Although you're more susceptible game two and three to graveyard hate, um, there's less aggro in best of three. That's good. That lets me. Ideally, I want to fill stuff up to make these fiend artisans bigger. Okay. Um, I'm going to put that on top. I want to hit my land drops. If they attack with both. I block here. You're a vampire soldier, not a knight. 